Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now that our year selector is functioning well, we need to have it work on the profile pages as well because so far it isn't working here. So that's a problem because if I click on my classes, uh, you see that uh, these are 2021 classes, but we have 2018 there, which is definitely not cool. Uh, let's look at tests here and see maybe these are working. Let's put 2021 there and click on tests. Nothing. So I think there's something weird here because I know this teacher in particular has tests that uh, he has created which are supposed to show here, but they aren't showing. So that's probably uh, an error. But for now, let's concentrate on the my classes section here to make sure that these classes obey the rule that is here. So let's leave it at 2018 for now, like that. And yeah, the indicator there is gone, but the classes are still here. So of course we will go to our profile in private controller, profile controller. So let's see, there we go, profile controller. And um, what's going on here? Test rows, row, row, uh huh. Test rows. Hmm. So I guess we did replace all this code here with this code that is up here. But it doesn't seem to be working. That's probably why the tests aren't showing. But let's deal with classes for now. Uh, let's see here. Instead of tests, let's deal with classes. Okay, so if the page tab is classes, this is what we receive. But it does not obey the year thingy. And it should be easy to do because we only have one query here and as long as we add something extra here to look for, which in this case is the date, then we have no problem. So I'll press uh, any key here, maybe a space, to secure this thing here while I uh, click on a controller like tests, for example. So I can steal some of this code here for how we get the school year specifically. So I'm just going to copy that line and on profile, I will add it to, um, let's see here, what are we using? Uh -huh. So there's an else, which means things end here. And this is student classes. Hmm. Okay, so here we have, um, okay, so the results, and then we get it for each loop and we add it to student classes. Okay, so this is still fine. Um, let's see here, data. So when we are running the query, this is the array we are adding. We're just adding the user ID, but we need to add a little bit more than that. So after the query itself, let's do something like this. I'll paste that. And this one is in AAR being the array. So I will remove this and put it right there. That way I can add it to the array. And then here I'll put a RR, which is this array right here. So let me copy this and put it right there, like so. And I want to equate this to the ID. So I'll move this over there. That way it becomes something like uh, array user ID is equal to that. And school year is equal to that. Now we need to add the school year here. Otherwise we get an error that the variables and uh, array objects do not match. And of course, in the tests.php, we did do that, which starts from here and year date is equal to year, like that school year. So I'm just going to paste that there and that should solve the problem. So let's come back here and let's refresh the page. So we have a syntax error, unexpected variable AAR on line 41. So errors are always good. It means things are changing and uh, we just need to fix a few things. 
So the reason I like seeing error so much is because um, it's intriguing for me that the software is self-regulating. It knows exactly where the problem is and it gives you a pointer, exactly what line number. So this should be exciting because if you don't see errors and things are not working well, that's a worse situation because you don't even know where to begin from. So at least we know line 41 has a syntax error. So where is this? This one right here. And it's because I didn't put a semicolon on the previous line. So this line is unexpected. So uh, yeah, let's say it's unexpected variable right there. So I'm going to refresh and there we go. We get nothing here, no classes found. Let's try for 2021 and click over there. Yeah, click here. I don't know why it doesn't go back to the actual tab when you click on this. Let's see. Yeah, 2021 has it. Let's see 2018. It's supposed to refresh the page, but apparently it isn't. Ah, right, right, right. So I see what's going on. Why it doesn't refresh It's because it replaces all the query variables with the ones that are inside the, uh, what's this, the, this part here. So because when we click on classes like this and I click here, uh, things don't go back to normal. So what we can do though, is simple because we just need the tab is equal to classes here which is part of the get uh, variables right what we can do is add hidden inputs on the um, let's go to the nav bar here let's correct this but for now this is working just fine uh, because the classes are now obeying the law we're going to take a look at tests just to be sure what's going on down there. But before that, let's go to our navigation in views. So I want to change um, how this responds. This is the form right here that contains the school year, but it only has one input, which is this select. This is why it replaces all get variables in the URL. And that's why we don't refresh back to the page that we were on. So in order to fix this, we can add some hidden fields that correspond to the uh, that correspond to the items in there. So what we can do is check to see first of all. Actually, let's just create a function. Usually, functions are better so that in the views we limit uh, the logic that we add here as much as possible so what i will do here is i'll just echo out the return of a function so um what will we call this function uh, we just call it add um, add get vars or something like this you can name these things a whole lot better so that you can uh, remember them easier so this is an echo over here of the result of this. So let's go to our functions.php in core and add a function there that will do exactly what we want. So I will add the keyword function and do that. And there we go. So of course we know that it's supposed to return something. So I'll just tell it to return um, an empty string for now just in case we we don't return anything so I'll say if not empty if the get uh, function or the get variable is not empty like that just the entire get so if it isn't empty then let's dump everything in here so what I want to do is implode it okay now, the problem is, I think an implosion wouldn't do very well. So let's go with that for each loop instead. So let's do for each uh, get like so as a key and value. So whatever is in the get here, what we wanna do is add to, actually for the return, let's just do something like uh, 
text is equal to empty string like so and then here we tell it to return the text like that and then we can simply add to the text here so i'll say text uh, dot equals which means add to it and here i want to add some inputs so i'm just going to say input and uh, close that input tag maybe use that just to be sure so there's an input here all we really need is the type which is hidden okay that's more important and then the name of the the thing and its value so those are very important things and once we do this uh, we have a key which will obviously be the name so i will put that name here so i'm putting double quotes on the outside so that any variables in here will be processed if i put the double quotes here and put single quotes on the outside this value will not it will end up just like this the way it looks but I want it to be whatever the key is at the time. So value will go to value. And that's it. So once we do this, we should be able to refresh back to the same page. So let's give it a shot. So I'm first going to refresh this page. I don't see any errors, so I'm assuming things are good. So now I will go to 2021. I want when I hit go, I'm still on the same page. So hit that button let's see the moment of truth what happens and voila i'm still back on the same page that's because all the uh, previous get variables have been included on this thing yeah very cool let's see here what was that url is about your profile what is going on i think the url should be removed if it exists so and url it's supposed to just be tab and year so let's let's remove that little nugget there so i'm going to say if key uh, is equal to url like this because we use the url for a special reason um, for the ht access so if it's not equal to url then uh, we are glad to add it there so I'm going to undo this and um, let's put 2018 this time and go. Okay, very good. Much cleaner. Great. Very nice. Uh, things is working here. Now let's deal with tests and see what's going on here. Why are tests not working as intended? Because if I go to my uh, PHP, my admin, where is that? I should see there a, there are a few tests that uh, this teacher has created. But uh, let's confirm that before we push ahead. And in the meantime, I can examine the code from profile.php. I'm going to this part which says uh, page tab is equal to tests. So let's see what's going on here. So if the person is not a student, this is when it goes through this section. Otherwise, if they're a student, it goes through that section. So clearly this section works fine, but this top part does not work very well. So if they're not a student, uh, we want to look for tests that they created themselves or um, let's see here. Actually, the code here should be exactly the same as the code for the um, the tests page uh, itself. So let's go to tests.php controller and let's look at this part where the user is, I think this one right here. This should be the ultimate. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this. Let's come back to profile and um, Mm -hmm. Let me look at this one right here, include. Okay, so we don't really need any of this content right here, so I will remove it. And um, let me save that. Now this right here is, mm -hmm. test rows, let's see that. 
let me paste what I copied and let's compare and contrast here so this entire section here I think resembles that so we are good here I can delete that so let's look at this from test disabled classing ID blah 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 everything is the same except where we add the school year so that's so good we can remove this Wait, are we using the tests model? What's going on here? It's tests, not test model. So I can leave this because I know the query is doing well. So remove all that as well. Boom. And uh, yeah, this is now representing. Now I'll remove this. I'll replace it with this part because I want to use the same variables here. So paste like so, back and save. So let's see if that does anything good. Let's refresh the page and unidentified variable tests model. Okay, so it's supposed to be tests, I guess. So let's remove that. And uh, let's refresh. Wait, what's going on? identified variable tests did I just remove something important I guess a line like this I let me put that here okay mm -hmm. let's do one more refresh and there we go so no tests found still but at least it respects the oh so it respects the year so let me make sure we are on 2021 and go Okay, so we are in 2021, but still nothing here. Okay, so back to school here, school DB. And let's make sure that uh, classes. Where is this? Um, no, actually it's tests. So let's go to tests. Let's make sure Mr. Vibe has a test here. Let's see. Yeah, so all these are tests. They're not disabled so clearly these tests should show but they aren't okay so let's fix this in the next video otherwise it will make this video too long i'll come back and we can do some more investigation as to why we can't see those here